Homeland Security's own inspector general has revealed how detained immigrants are subjected to rotten food, severe overcrowding, inadequate medical care, and broken and overflowing toilets. The inspector showed up at these four detention jails, unannounced, between May and November 2018, in response to several concerns raised by immigration rights groups and complaints made by prisoners. Meanwhile, the Trump administration has announced it plans to hold some 1,400 immigrant children at a site on Fort Sill Army Base in Oklahoma that was once used as an internment camp for Japanese Americans during World War II. The agency is already holding a record number of children in some 168 facilities and programs in 23 states. For more, we go to Houston, Texas, where we're joined by Ara Bogado, immigration reporter for Reveal from the Center for Investigative Reporting. She's been speaking with migrants held in a number of these jails. Ara, welcome back to Democracy Now! There was not a lot of mainstream media attention on this inspector general report. Again, the inspector general for the Department of Homeland Security. Talk about what it revealed. Good morning, Amy. It's great to be back. Um, the inspector general's report uh, indicates what uh, immigrants have said for years about conditions in various detention facilities. Um, as you mentioned, the inspector general's report did surprise visits to four sites. Three of them are run by the private prison company GEO, and the other one is uh, local to uh, Essex County, New Jersey. And it's hard to know where to begin, but, uh, you know, some of what stands out are the photos, uh, for example, from the bathroom facilities, where there is uh, unusable toilets, mildew and mold on uh, the showers. Uh, the inspector general said that this poses health risks uh, to the people who, to the detainees who are being held there, uh, little to no access to recreation, um, horrible food conditions, uh, moldy bread, uh, raw, leaking uh, chicken blood, uh, unmarked, unlabeled food. Um, again, things that we've heard about for years. And as you mentioned, this is the DHS uh, inspector general, and uh, they found that there were multiple violations of ICE's own detention standards. Uh, and ICE concurred with the one recommendation, was, which was to have uh, increased oversight. Um, in, in some cases, they tried to make fixes right away, such as replacing the, the kitchen manager at one of the facilities during uh, the inspection. Um, but with uh, some other recommendations, they uh, sort of indicated that they'd think about it. For example, uh, the Aurora facility in, in Colorado has a space for um, in-contact visits, uh, which we know improves the morale of people who are being held uh, in any kind of detention or, or prison environment. And uh, although it has those facilities, it doesn't allow contact uh, visits. And um, the inspector general report cited that. And ICE's response was, you know, we'll sort of we'll think about it, but the standard isn't to have contact visits, uh, so it's an interesting way to sort of skirt that particular uh, issue, which was addressed in the report. Unaccompanied minors then um, who who leave the border patrol stations are then taken to shelters around the country, which are run by the Office of Refugee Resettlement. These are all contracted facilities throughout the country, and that's a different department altogether. That's not DHS, but the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, some of we, what we found is tremendous abuse, um, both accusations and, and proven uh, allegations, um, as well as, you know, in, in, some of, in some of these places, there is uh, the use of restraints forced drugging. Um, my reporting partner and I, uh, my, uh, Patrick Michaels and I, we've been investigating secret shelters in which the um, Office of Refugee Resettlement, uh, uh, without any judicial oversight, sends children to psychiatric facilities or residential treatment centers, and they're sort of off the map of uh, the shelters that, that we do know about. They're not contracted facilities. Um, and yes, people people die. There are really horrible uh, conditions in a lot of these places. And as you mentioned, there have been two dozen deaths uh, during the Trump administration. Um, that accounts for the 200 or so deaths. Um, 
since we've been keeping track, which is since 2003, I believe. Um, and then there have been four deaths immediately after custody. So those are also tricky uh, to, to track. Uh, we think that it's four people who died immediately after being released. Um, they may have been in custody when they were taken to a hospital and then paroled, uh, essentially taken out of custody uh, immediately thereafter. Um, but these are, these are pretty high numbers. And again, they come from places in which people have been detailing the horrid conditions uh, for quite a long time.